At age 13, Jonathan Murphy was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome on the autism spectrum. Autism is the fastest growing developmental disability in the world. With a variety of learning disabilities and obsessive compulsive behaviors, Jonathan was different and he was bullied in school. This led him to cultivate a rich inner life, which along with a life-changing discovery, eventually proved to have a very silver lining. He's now a successful voiceover actor. Having earned his coveted Actors Union card, he lists among his credits the voiceover for Great America and the voices of many other characters on apps, video games, toys, and audiobooks. But his most important voice is the voice of hope and optimism for children on the autism spectrum and their parents. He gives presentations in assemblies, conferences, and webisodes for students, parents, teachers, and other professionals. He also works for Parka Reach, an integrated child care program working with kids on and off the spectrum. Jonathan, let's start at the beginning when you were a little boy. Okay. You quickly discovered, and those around you discovered, that you were a little bit different from your friends. Mm -hmm. How were you different and how did you know? Well, I knew early on because I, I was more into things like literature, art, um, kind of playing make-believe. And I wasn't really into the things that most typical little boys were. I didn't really like sports or a lot of roughhousing or a lot of, you know, the usual kind of things. So I, I was just very different, I guess, in that regard. That I, I, and I tended to kind of gravitate more towards the girls rather than the boys. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were you ever teased? Was it ever difficult for you? Oh, sure. I mean, you know, when, when all the boys are doing like their own, talking about like their favorite sports, their own sports teams and stuff like that, or, or you know, doing a lot of athletics, and you're like one of the only ones not really doing that, it, it, it singles you out. And, you know, when you're, back when I was growing up anyway, usually when you're different, it means you're an easy target to be uh, ridiculed. Any times that you remember that were particularly painful? Well, that's kind of the good thing about, well, the, the good thing about being uh, um, on the uh, autism spectrum is that, um, you know, you really don't. I was, I was kind of in my, my head for so long that a lot of what they did didn't really, I, I guess actually there it might be one instance because there were some things that they purposefully did. Um, I didn't like being touched. Mm -hmm. um, and, or if I, t if they touched me, I would have to like kind of touch you back. Of course, I've, I've, I've gotten away from that now. But back then, it was a big issue for me. And uh, when they found that out, they would run up to me, and they would uh, poke me, usually really hard, and run away kind of laughing at me. And that definitely made me a little, made me very upset. And you would, you would pursue them? Uh, well, I mean, sometimes I would, and sometimes I, I just couldn't, out of fear or embarrassment or, you know, there was a whole group of them, and I was, you know, kind of alone. I was a big guy, even back when I was mm -hmm. a kid, but... What was it about that? Was it just an obsession that you, what was, what was behind that that has to do with Asperger's and autism? Oh, well, I mean, it was, it was probably more of um, a, a, a compulsion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, like a compulsion where I, I felt the need, and I don't know, I, I either don't know or I don't remember where mm -hmm. it came from or where it started, but I felt the need to, um, I needed to do that. Uh -huh. It's one of those things like when you see somebody who is um, autistic or is, is on the spectrum where they have to like, uh, like wave their hands or, or make or motion or, 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 or make f noises to themselves or, or they walk around in a, in a pace around in a circle. Um, we don't really know why we have to do these things or why they're important to us. They just are. We, we just do feel them. Feel compelled. Yeah. We just feel yeah. compelled. Now, speaking of that, you did develop uh, a rich inner life um, where you discovered and uh, cultivated a real talent as a mimic. Tell me about that, a, a, in particular a voice mimic. Well, I, always, um, I was always into uh, popular culture. Um, I watched a lot of, you know, I watched a lot of cartoons, took in a lot of media, uh, like video games, animation, uh, 
television, movies. And uh, one thing about um, people on the spectrum is that we can, we can a lot of us tend to hold, uh, we can hold in a lot of information in our heads. And uh, we can um, tell you everything we, need, we can about one particular subject that we're very interested in. And I liked to act out my own scenarios, my own like stories, and I would play the characters. And I would mimic those characters as best as I can. And you would walk around in a circle, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We called them my uh, we call them my episodes. Now this isn't like uh, the normal kind of episode. When when you say episode, you think oh it's like it's um, the same thing as a meltdown. Yeah, yeah. Or they're having like, or 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 a, something as severe as like a seizure or something. Mm -hmm. They have an episode. For me, it was like an episode of a TV series that was going on inside my brain. Uh -huh, uh -huh. The, the, the thing was, though, that I had to learn is that um, it, while, it may, while what I was doing was making sense to me in my head, um, to people who were looking at it, it, was, it may have seemed a little odd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I think that sort of helped fuel my, my, creative, my creative yeah. side yeah, yeah. and my, uh, my side of like telling stories and, like you said, mimicking these mm -hmm. characters. Well, let's talk about you and school mm -hmm. and, and your abilities yes. and challenges. There were some things you were, I assume, very good at at school and some things that were challenging. Mm -hmm. What were those? Um, well, I was very good at um, English, uh, reading. Um, I loved uh, you know, history. Uh, I, was, I was good at a lot of sciences, uh, learning about new things, the, the, the discoveries of uh, new things. Um, I was reading at like a college level when I was still in elementary school. Um, I have something called um, uh, audio processing. There's a couple things we'll you know we'll get into, but one of these is um, an audio processing disorder where I can absorb a lot of information in my brain, but when you ask me to write it down or like like write that down or or sort of summarize it. It's really hard. It's like there's something in me that stops between my brain and my mouth or my hands. Hmm. And that made it hard for me to do uh, book reports or write papers or do, um, you know, I was good at spelling and stuff like that. I was good at like writing words and spelling words because there's a lyrical kind of a song like quality to sounds and how words are spelled out and words are formed. Um, I was also, I also found math very difficult. Hmm. Uh, which is, um, you know, people who are good at English tend to be bad at math, and people who are bad at are good at math tend to be bad at English. Mm -hmm. But uh, math just never really clicked for me. Um, and all of this is related, directly or indirectly, to the well, to what became your diagnosis. Let's talk about yes, that. Yes. At age thirteen, your parents were wondering, is something going on? And you received your diagnosis. What was your and your family's reaction, and how did that change things for you? Well, I think that they, my my mom and dad knew even as er, even when I was much younger, there was something wrong with that. There was something not wrong, right. but something different mm -hmm. about me. That I wasn't learning the way that the school that I was going to was was teaching, um, and that they couldn't help me. And that it wasn't because I was lazy or not applying myself, or not participating, I was learning things differently. So were, was everyone devastated? No. Um, well, they found a school that was more um, out of the box. It's a school called the Stanbridge Academy, and they're in San Mateo. And it's a private school with smaller classes, and they do more kind of hands-on learning, like field trips and stuff. And uh, that was where I met with my diagnosis. And um, instead of being devastated, it was more like, Oh, oh, that makes sense. So you were relieved. I wasn't. It, it wasn't more. It was. It wasn't more of a relief. It wasn't so much of a relief as it was a uh, moment of clarity mm. Mm. that I finally got it. And I think one thing I can take away from this is um, knowledge, having the knowledge of my disability, and um, or the knowledge of what. I was capable of. What were my challenges? What what were my, what, what were my challenges? What uh -huh. were my limits that um, helped me? Uh -huh. And I could sort of look back and say, "Oh, this is why I do things," and 
I can use this as so an advantage. It, yeah, so essentially, in some ways, comforting. Yeah. Uh, what, very briefly, is the working definition of autism and Asperger's? I am not a doctor, so I really can't give you a good um, medical label for Don't it. Don't need that. No, no, no. <laughs> but um, in my mind, uh, people with uh, Asperger's, it's, it's part of the autism spectrum. And it's the inability to read social cues, the, uh, the inability to kind of look you in the eye and to read these sort of... Um, to socialize with people. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very hard. You get stuck in your own head and you go on and on and um, it's hard to really make like a good conversation or to put yourself out there. So there's certain things that you are more sensitive to than other people and certain things that you are less sensitive to. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Um, I mean, one of the things that I'm more sensitive to is um, sound. A lot of uh, people on the spectrum tend to be uh, uh, sensitive to things, they can be sensitive to things like lights, uh, touching, like they have to like touch like smooth surfaces or something, or they, mm. they can't they can't really be touched at all. Or last um, touch. Yeah, or last touch. Um, mine is sound. Uh, I can get overwhelmed if there's a lot of a lot of noise going mm -hmm. on, and you know, over time I've learned to tune it out. But it was a big problem uh, when I was younger. Well, it sounds like you have learned a lot because. Mm -hmm. Uh, it, you, you, don't, you don't seem to fit somebody who has the social challenges that you're talking about. What strategies have worked for you? So one of the uh, things that I've learned is when you kind of know what your disability is, you can kind of work with it. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, a good uh, thing is my writing. Um, I, have what's, I have dysgraphia, which is I, I grip the pencil too hard and it's hard for me to write, and it's physically painful even for me to write things down. So when I went to Stanbridge, I was able to give reports in other ways. I could talk to you about it. I could act it out. I could do like you know graphs. I can record things. Um, eventually, I learned I could use the uh, computer and type things out. When I went to college, that's what I did. I went to the learning resources, uh, learning dis. I went to the Learning Disability uh, Resources Center, mm -hmm. and I, they allow you to take tests in a quiet room to type your reports out, and that really worked for me. What about the social uh, aspect of it? Have you learned to actually read more cues from people? Yeah, because I sort of learned how to study things by watching people do it on television. In fact, every, every kind of conversation or the way I talk is from watching people on television. So if, it's, if I'm animated in any kind of way, that's kind of how I used to be. And uh, that, that's, what I've, that's what I'm used to. I'm used to seeing that on television and uh, mimicking the people that I saw. So that's kind of uh, the people that I saw um, on TV. So that's why I, I always sound very uh, overly animated at times, because I'm just imitating um, how they're speaking. Nowadays you have uh, the internet where people are doing vlogs or they're, mm -hmm. they're just kind of talking and I kind of watch them and I learn how they speak and how they tone things back. Well and also but, but you are rather than seeing this person is feeling this way you are saying this person reminds me of or is mimicking somebody that I once saw on television. Is that how it works? This facial expression means yes. something I've seen before rather than I'm intuiting something in that person. Yes, it's like I'm a blank slate and that when I look at things and stuff, I kind of take that in and I, I, I imitate them, mm -hmm. which is how it's sort of helped me with my, uh, my acting abilities as well. And I consider that a good strength because I'm able to embody what kind of character that I'm playing as mm -hmm. in the moment. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about your acting. Mm -hmm. um, tell me uh, about the moment that changed your life. Well, it was a long series of, it was a great gradual moment, but when I discovered that I uh, could do acting, it, it made a big difference in my life. Um, I ended up, I found out that I could uh, go to college because of it, that I could have a career because of it. 
and it was something that I was good at, I enjoy doing. And that's a big key thing is, you know, finding what you're good at, finding what you enjoy. And then when you do that, your whole life is, changes. You know, people who are on the spectrum, they're interested in one thing. Like, for example, if you're interested in dinosaurs, you know, if you talk about dinosaurs, is there a job but working at a museum? Mm -hmm, working mm -hmm. as an archaeologist. They'd be perfect at it. You find that thing that they're interested in and suddenly they're surrounded by a community of people who are like-minded. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. when you're surrounded by people who like you and respect you and you're, you're, you're an important asset to them, it changes your yeah. life. It, 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 yeah, it, it, it's everything and, and you build that confidence. And when I started doing theater, the positive response that I got from that was uh, life-changing for me. Uh, people were, I was making people laugh. I was, I was holding their attention and I had them. And not because, not because they were laughing at me and what I was doing, but they were laughing at me and they were laughing with, with me. With you. Yeah, with me and in, in the way that I was, I was doing and I, I had them all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And even people who didn't know me, People who were, you know, I, when I started branching out, doing theater in other places of people who didn't know me, I was immediately accepted. Mm -hmm. That has applications group. for people who are both on and off. The Absolutely. Now, it does strike me that that's an unlikely pairing. When I think of autism, I think of people who tend to be introverted mm -hmm. and people who love routine and predictability. Yeah. When I think of theater, I think of the ultimate extroverts, and a life of chaos, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to things like auditions. How, why, how do you handle that? Well, it's like I said before, you know, it's something that I enjoy doing. Even if I don't get the part, the fact that I have the opportunity to do that is just, uh, you know, it, it's a reward unto itself. And I, I think it's it just, I just added it onto my routine in a way that kind of fits. What do you mean by that? Well, um, one thing about me is that I, I can't be overwhelmed. I can't be overwhelmed with too much going on at the same time. The life of an actor is, as you said, like peaks and valleys. And there are some uh, challenges to that where you're not getting any auditions at all or you're, suddenly you have like a lot of work at the last minute. Well, I'm thinking of the positives in twofold. I either don't get auditions at all, and I have more time to just kind of relax and have more downtime, as I say, or I get the auditions, and then I'm in my element. Wow, what an optimist. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> you know, a lot of people, are actors, are, are, are always afraid of that rejection, or they, they fear that rejection. But for me, it's like, well, yeah, it kind of, it's kind of a bummer that I didn't get that part, but, you know, it, at least I don't have to wake up at four in the morning to go all the way to who knows where out in the middle of nowhere in the peninsula to, uh, to do that. Right. I can just sleep in. Now, you give a lot of presentations mm -hmm. uh, to parents and professionals and to kids. Mm -hmm. What is or are the top message or messages that you really want to convey to them? Um, don't be afraid. I think there's a big kind of fear in the uh, for people on the spectrum, uh, whether it's you know you're afraid that if your child is um, autistic or has autism, that that's it. You know they they won't be able to really mm -hmm. amount to anything, or or they'll need like they won't be able to live independently, which is not true. They'll need help. You know they'll need help on certain things, and they'll need a, a good support system. But like I said, you know, find their interest. And if you can sort of slowly uh, let them do it at their own pace, like I said, for me, it's, it's being overwhelmed. I did everything kind of at my own pace. Mm -hmm. And I, I was afraid of failure at first, like most people are. Everyone, mm -hmm. no, one, no one likes to fail. But I finally just accepted the fact that Failure is kind of part of life, and maybe it's because I faced a lot of rejection as an actor. That, and you know, it's not it's not always my fault. Things are just going to happen. Things are just not going to work out, and you got to accept that. But I think it's the fear that really kind of drives people. And I think if we can get over that and say that it's 
there's nothing really to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. We're different, but that's a good that can that's not a bad thing. In fact, it can be a good thing. Some of the most brilliant people in history may be on the spectrum. Many people think that like Albert Albert Einstein could have been on the spectrum, mm -hmm. and it certainly fits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to finish up with, mm -hmm. I suppose, uh, a little advice uh, about uh, for both parents and kids um, about. Well, tell me what some of the biggest barriers are that you yourselves or the world sets in front of you, and how best to help the child or yourself to overcome those. I think, uh, like I said, a big barrier is probably that fear, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the 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 sort of lack of understanding. The, the lack of understanding that uh, you know people don't really you need to learn what being on the spectrum is it's not something to be afraid of though you need to learn you need to learn what their quirks are and maybe if they learn it too you can work with that with them of how to um, of how to maybe uh, work through that mm -hmm. they can live independent like I said they can live independently they just need some that's such great advice, not just for those on the spectrum, but so much of what you've been talking about, I think, applies to everybody. So um, a lot of good work going on there, really interesting material, and it's, it's so important that more people understand it, I would think. Yes, yes, and, so. and, and, and not, not be afraid of it and that, you know, anything's possible. Um, anybody can live independently. Thank you so much for sharing all that. Mm -hmm. Congratulations on your award. Thank you very much. Do you know someone who has overcome significant hardship and has an inspiring story to tell? Someone who has sacrificed or given over and above to the community and deserves some recognition? If so, please contact us with your nomination for next year's Local Hero Awards. To find out more about our local heroes and to watch interviews with all the winners, visit our website, midpenmedia.org. At the Midpen Community Media Center, you can make your own videos and television programs and take classes in all aspects of media production. You can also hire our professional services team. To find out more about that, go to mcproservices.com. Congratulations to all our winners, and thank you for watching.